A lot of nursing students think that heart failure means that the heart fails, that it stops, but it's actually way sneakier than that. So let me show you what's actually going on inside the heart during heart failure. So this lesson is going to cover the basics of heart failure. So we're going to give you the most important things you need to know. So what exactly causes heart failure? Well, anything that impacts the heart's ability to pump can potentially cause heart failure. So the top two causes are MIs and hypertension. So what's going on? Here's our heart. Um, we've got our four chambers. We've got our blood flow. So if one of these coronary arteries is blocked, then we'll see this muscle down here is going to die. Okay. Big thing with an MI, dead muscle cannot pump. Okay. Doesn't pump. So if dead muscle can't pump, then we lose the heart's ability to pump. Okay. Now in hypertension, if you remember from the hemodynamics lesson is an increased pressure in the system. And so the heart's having to work even harder against that pressure. So you're going to see an increased afterload. So the longer the heart's having to work that extra hard to get past that afterload, the more likely it is to um, begin to fail and kind of tire out. And then with our valve disorders, if this is our valve and it either it's having issues getting forward or it's regurgitating backwards, so regurgitation or stenosis, basically what we're seeing is the blood's not getting where it's supposed to go. And so you see congestion and you see backup of flow because the blood's not going forward. So again, anything that can cause the heart to have issues pumping or affects the heart's ability to pump can effectively cause heart failure. Hope is not a strategy. You either know you're going to pass or you think and hope that you are. Simclex simulates the NCLEX for you and your NCLEX ready score tells you if you are ready to take the NCLEX and pass right now. Head over to nursing.com to get your nursing survival package and NCLEX ready score now. There's multiple ways we can diagnose and classify heart failure, but we want you to know these three. The lab value that we use is called brain natriuretic peptide or BNP, and it is released whenever the ventricles are stretched. So in congestive heart failure, when we see that severe volume overload, we can see this number jump super high up into the thousands. Now in the lab course, we'll talk much more detail about this value, so be sure to check that out. Now we'll also do a chest x-ray, which could show a couple of things. You may see that the heart is actually enlarged because of the overload and that stretch in the ventricles that's pushing out and it's making the muscles dilate out. Um, and then you may also see fluid in the lungs. That's that pulmonary edema that we're seeing from the congestion. Now we'll also get an echocardiogram and this is going to show us a couple things. One is end diastolic volumes. Remember that measures preload. The other thing we'll see is ejection fraction and in heart failure patients, it's usually less than 50%. So that's not good. And then we can also see on an echo if there's any valve disorders. Okay, so let's look at what this patient actually looks like when you see them in clinical practice. Now, in the module intro, we did ask you all to brainstorm what you thought this patient looked like. So let's see if you got it right. Now, if you get nothing else about heart failure, this is the part you've got to get. Remember, we said that there's decreased perfusion forward, decreased perfusion forward, and increased congestion backwards. All right, so in right-sided heart failure, forward is the lungs. So we have decreased perfusion to the lungs. So we're gonna see some oxygenation problems. They may struggle with activity because they're just not getting enough blood flow to their lungs and they're not getting enough gas exchange. And then backwards, we see that congestion into the system. They're way overloaded in that systemic circulation. So what does that mean? Well, the big thing here, we got peripheral edema. Um, so how would you feel if you swelled up like crazy, right? So if you swelled up like crazy, you're going to be tired. You're going to be fatigued. You might even gain some weight, weight gain, right? And then some of this fluid can even collect in the gut. That's called ascites. And if you had that, you might even be nauseated. So just imagine how you'd feel if you had all this extra fluid on you, right? Um, and then because the blood can't get past the heart into the body, it's also going to back up into the neck. So you're going to see this distension of the jugular vein or JVD. It's like a rope in their neck, y'all. It's really swollen and uh, distended. So again, if you're seeing these signs of excess volume out in the body, then you got to think right-sided heart failure. Okay. 
So what about left? Well, they actually have decreased perfusion to the body. So remember, what are our signs of decreased perfusion? So they're going to be pale, uh, decreased pulses. They might have slow cap refill and their skin might even be cool, right? So signs of decreased perfusion. And then we see the congestion happening in their lungs. That's that congestion backwards from the left side of the heart goes into the lungs. So we're going to see pulmonary edema. So you see they're going to have a cough, right? Their sputum is going to be pink and frothy because of that extra blood flow within the lungs. And imagine, you know, imagine if this was you and you had a cough and you had all this extra fluid on your lungs, how would you want to sit? What position would you want to be in? They are going to be extremely short of breath when they're lying flat. Okay. Cause all that fluid is going to put pressure on their lungs and it's going to make it hard to breathe. And so a lot of times they'll sleep with multiple pillows. And sometimes even in a recliner. I know my uh, grandfather has heart failure and he sleeps in the recliner he has for the last 20 years. <laughs> so if you see these really significant respiratory issues, I really want you to think left-sided heart failure. Um, sometimes they might even have weight loss because their choice is eat or breathe and they choose to breathe. So again, right-sided, the classic symptom is this peripheral edema. It's the systemic volume overload. And on the left side, the classic sign is going to be this pulmonary edema and this fluid in the lungs. So there's quite a few other complications of heart failure, but the one I really want you to understand is what happens in the kidneys when they don't get perfused. So here's our patient, um, our little heart failure guy, and he's already volume overloaded and he's got this decreased perfusion and he's struggling to breathe and now he's not perfusing his kidneys. So we've not decreased perfusion to the kidneys. So what happens when the kidneys lose their blood flow is it stimulates the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Now you'll learn more about this in the pharmacology course, but what you need to know is that it causes three main things to happen in the body. The first is water retention, and that's due to the uh, ADH, antidiuretic hormone, and aldosterone. So the kidneys see this lack of flow and they think that they need to hold on to water to try to improve their blood flow. And so what we see is this increased preload or stretch on these ventricles whose preload is already sky high. Now, the second thing that we see is vasoconstriction. So vasoconstricts, again, it's the goal here is to increase the blood pressure so that it increases flow. Um, but what happens is it ends up increasing afterload and therefore workload on a heart that is already working super hard. Um, and then the third thing that we see is the RAAS stimulates the sympathetic nervous system activity, the goal being to increase heart rate, increase contraction, again, just trying to get more flow to the kidneys. But again, we're putting all this extra workload on a heart that is already overworked. Okay. So what's happening here is the end result is more volume overload, more stress on the heart and a perpetuated cycle that never ends. And that's why I call it the cycle of death. My students all hear me say this, it's a cycle of death. So what you'll see when we look at therapeutic management in the next lesson is the majority of therapy is actually aimed at breaking this cycle. So let's recap. Anything that affects the heart's ability to pump effectively can cause heart failure, including MIs, hypertension, and valve disorders. In right-sided heart failure, we see that decreased perfusion forward to the lungs and increased systemic congestion. So the big thing is your peripheral edema and your JVD. In left-sided, we see decreased systemic perfusion, so you'll see decreased pulses and that increased pulmonary congestion with that pulmonary edema, especially things like pink frothy sputum and just significant shortness of breath. We'll use a BNP, a chest x-ray, and an echocardiogram to diagnose, and again, we'll see um, an ejection fraction of usually less than 50%. I've seen uh, people with ejection fractions of 20%, which is not good. Um, and then remember that the impact that this has on the kidneys can make the problem worse. And so we'll talk in the next lesson about how to work to break that cycle of death for these patients. So I hope we've been able to clear up heart failure for you a little bit. Our goal is to make it easier to understand and give you that peace of mind and confidence. So go out and be your absolute best self today. And as always, happy nursing. Look, PowerPoints won't save you. 
professors won't save you, and that sinking feeling you're feeling in your gut right now, that's real. Nursing.com is the reason over 300,000 nursing students have gone on to pass the NCLEX and become practicing nurses. Get your nursing survival plan over at nursing.com right now.